And welcome to episode 66 of Game Theory, our podcast, competition, strategy, decision making. And Chris, the in-laws were in town over the weekend. I live in North Carolina. We drove some miles to go visit what, the... Which you often do. Yes, some miles, which is just a great way to make it seem like um, I'm an English writer from the 1890s. It's impressive. We, we went down the interstate and we went and visited Biltmore, the mansion that Cornelius Vanderbilt's son built in Asheville, North Carolina. And have you ever been? No, no, I've heard it's sick. I've been, to, I've been to Asheville, but I didn't take the time to go visit the mansion. Yeah, we were there together, actually. But the mansion is, it is really cool. What a enormous waste of money that was must have been. <laughs> I think Yo, but wait, okay, him. but he was like the, the railroad guy, right? Cornelius Vanderbilt was like the railroad baron. It was like, it was like him and Carnegie with Standard Oil and I forget whoever yes. else. But he was like, he like probably wiped his rear end with wildcat or currencies from the American frontier. Oh, no question. Then his son wasted all his money on this house. Honestly, it's a baller move. Do it no work. Move. And now it's like Reap a museum, all the essentially. It's cool. It's, it sounds like a sweet place. It is. Um, I may have got pooped on by a bird. It may have been avocado crema from a th- thing I was eating. I actually don't know. I, ref- I wiped it off before anybody could see it. We can only hope that you got served the justice you so richly deserve. I love birds. Nobody loves birds more than me, man. I love no, birds. They, They're like my favorite. Apparently, they don't love you. What do you mean? You What do you mean you love? What do you mean nobody loves birds more than I you? I love birds. I don't like bird watching because it seems hard, but I love birds. You look at a bird. Yeah, you find uh, well, you the bird. Look, you I, identify. We gotta identify them. I'm not gonna like reference it first, and then go out and look for look for birds. Today we're talking about the TikTok ban and congressional brinksmanship, but. Um, we have some things to talk about first. The You saw our friend Justin's book in the wild. He sent it to us, but you saw it in real life. That's true. Justin Bergner's got a book out called Solving the Price is Right. He uh, sent us a copy. We were delighted to have him on the show in the early stage, well, in, the, in the later stages of writing, I think early stages of pre- uh, publishing the book. Uh, really phenomenally interesting read about how people use game theory or misuse game theory to make their wagers on the prices right. And he goes in depth in, into a lot of different games and the data are presented really well, really fascinating book. And he sent us a copy and it was awesome. And I, I, I've enjoyed reading it. And uh, I, I couldn't believe it. I was at a bookstore the other day, uh, an unnamed bookstore that rhymes with Blarns and Blobel. And I walked over to the science section and there it was staring me right in the face. It was so cool to see that. So Justin's got his book out out now on shelves, uh, Solving the Price is Right. Really interesting read. And I could not believe, Nick, that I saw it just sitting there in a big old bookstore. Yeah, it was it was, it was outward facing. I hope you put it on one of those books we recommend shelves or something where everybody could see it. Uh, so I wrote a fake review. I, I, <laughs> I impersonated a Barnes & Noble employee and put one of those little sticky things on there. Uh, that's, all you, that's all you can do. Here, I got a picture of it for those of you watching on YouTube.com. Uh, trying to grow our YouTube channel, making shorts and things. There it is. It looks like that. Okay. Um, also, we have an update on the cheating scandal. Remember we did our cheating episode? One of our most listened yes. to episodes ever. There was chess, fishing, and poker. So the poker thing is still debated. It is increasingly coming out that maybe she did cheat, but also maybe that guy was a douchebag about it. And like that one is unsettled. And I think that will be unsettled for some time. More things mm-hmm. came out in chess that the guy was way bigger cheater than we even thought. And then we had the fisherman thing where they had, we got weights and fish. That was so. That was the funniest thing in the world. Like yeah, those guys I, almost I, died. Those guys. I, were I think get back on that episode all the time, and I, I sometimes I cannot believe that these guys went to the trouble to not only put lead weights in the fish, but also other a like fish. fillets of fish. They have put fish inside the fish. Incredible yeah. like, move. People are looking at it like, well, the big one weighs way less than the little one. <laughs> like, like, well, I'm not like a I'm not a scientist here, but it, it doesn't so, seem right. They pleaded guilty to, I believe, felony charges. Let's find out. Two men, blah, 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 blah. The pl- first plea is a step in teaching these two crooks a lesson, according to the prosecutor. This is such an easy case for a prosecutor. They were caught on camera. Nothing bad will happen, and they just get to win points. Like, we're going to hold them to justice. They if that prosecutor's not married, they, he, they, if that prosecutor's not married, that's going to be the, the classic go-to sure. like date story. Like, tell me about a fun case that you were in. Like, well, I prosecuted these two guys that were cheating at a fishing derby. Must be nice for a prosecutor to just get a softball like that and make bam Truly. home run. So they admitted guilt. As part of their plea agreement, they had to forfeit the ownership of their boat and their trailer that they used in the tournament. I don't know where those go. That's an interesting punishment. Um, the state is recommending a sentence of six months 
to probation in court, um, which is good. They shouldn't go to prison over this. They should be scared that they're going to go to prison, but they shouldn't go to prison. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they're fixing the outcome of a sporting contest, but they were caught, and that's that's kind of enough punishment. Like, like the justice system has to be involved in some way to yeah. make some semblance of fairness. And it's also about, like, if you live in a society where people – commit wrongdoing then there has to be some claim of rightness against which to balance it and so it's not a matter of just like well forgive and forget but regardless you're right they shouldn't go to prison for that but they should be uh, worried and deeply ashamed shame is a concept that i think has gotten a bad rap over the last several (laughs) years and it needs to come back in a big way starting with these guys i can't imagine the last couple months being like i was just like cheating a little and a little more and a little more and now i'm gonna go to fucking prison over fish and so Man. that's but if they do it again i'm sure they will definitely go to prison but i'm i'm also sure that they, they're facing a lifetime ban or a 10-year ban they'll never be competitively fishing again you just google them real quick like oh no yeah and anybody that's in those circle it was in uh, lake erie right yeah i think so it was in ohio it might have been in some other lake in ohio but it was definitely in ohio and they were yeah. they fished in lake erie i don't know if this event was at lake erie but yes that is correct so yeah, good for them. Uh, good for the state of Ohio. For good, good for finally. yeah, good for them. Good for yeah, them. They we went to prison. Lesson. They were looking at prison time, bro. Like for fish. Unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Okay, um, I found that video on TikTok, which is an app. You like that segue? Wow, that was really good. I thought for a second you were gonna you were gonna get the segue wrong because mm. we were talking about birds and bird watching. I thought you were gonna go speaking of the bird app. Uh, I am on bird talk. Don't. Uh, Is that like so real we, birds? No, it's yeah. No, I mean, I follow owlers, owlries on. TikTok. Or is that like like birds aren't real? You heard of that? Yeah. The conspiracy theory that birds are just part of the government. The government doesn't need birds to watch you. They have TikTok. Yeah. Well, and they, I think I think it's like a, a Gen Z conspiracy theory to make fun of the idiots who still think that the earth is flat. And by the way, yeah. player three, if you're listening to this and you think the earth is flat, stop listening to us right now. We don't want to be associated with that. We don't talk right. about that nonsense. Like, like you can, can hate Kansas us. You can do whatever you want. The earth is not flat. Kansas yes. is flat. Much Shut up. God's sake. <laughs> Go, like, read a book, man. We don't yeah. have time for that. But so we are talking about TikTok today yeah. because you saw this video on a TikTok Yes. And apparently the U.S. government doesn't want you to do that anymore, Nick. Yes. So the Congress has been actually explained. They grilled the CEO, which we'll get into in a little bit, which made them look bad. They're never prepared for this fucking shit. They, Who, Congress? <laughs> yes. God. They, But they did. There were some actual conversations in the congressional grilling uh, that happened. However, it was uh, our 45th president, Donald T. Trump, who <laughs> Donald is... Donald T. Trump. <laughs> Big T. It was Big T. Just, just, pause, just real quick. That's one of my favorite stupid jokes. I, I, I love calling somebody by the full name, except for deliberately misnaming the middle, the middle initial. Name. Yeah, that's Nicholas a great joke. That's W. Andrews. That would be so good. I, I mean, it would be great, but unfortunately, it's not. I'm not going to tell anybody what it is for operational security reasons. Oh, OPSEC. Yeah, good call. I never put my middle initial in any documents. Like, it's I'm optional. To, like, well, if it's optional. I'm staying on theme here. Yeah. It's, yeah exercise absolutely. your option as often as possible. Larry Murphy told Nicholas Lidstrom that about the morning skate in early on in his career. Yeah. We don't know that lesson. Yeah. If it's optional, don't go. So, okay. So, CEO and TikTok and the ban, this goes back further than that. Donald T. Trump threatened to ban the app in 2020 when he learned probably in a briefing that morning that maybe the Chinese Communist Party, a.k.a. the Chinese government, could be uh, making the company TikTok, which is kind of a legit company, making them share data at will with anybody that they want at any point in time. My guess is based on what I know about President Trump is that he probably heard about it at like 7 a.m. and then just spoke about it. And everyone was like, bro, shut the fuck up yeah, about what we know about TikTok. Yeah, it, it pretty pretty surprisingly quick turnaround about this. So, so TikTok yeah. is owned by a Chinese-based company called ByteDance. It's spelled B-Y-T-E-D-A-N-C-E. And the CEO of TikTok itself is named Shozi Chu. And he was the guy that was on Capitol Hill getting grilled by lawmakers. Right. And he said, he during that hearing, he said, look, ByteDance might still have some access to U.S. user information. Like, that might actually be true. And one of the one of the lines that they're taking, I think, it, it, for TikTok is that the sharing of data with the Chinese government is no different than what other social media apps have done mm-hmm. with the U.S. government. We'll get to that a little bit later on. I think there's some like grand strategic implications of, of having this yeah. information. But for now, Nick, I want to I want to talk to you about just like some basic information about how why TikTok, which everybody knows is pretty popular, 
Why is that app now suddenly coming up in American politics where the U.S. government is considering a ban for national security reasons? Right. So I'm going to hit you with some knowledge. Knowledge time. So, so this is coming out of The Economist. Nick, if you had to guess how many million users in America does TikTok have, what would you say? I know for a fact that TikTok is years ahead of where Facebook, Twitter, or Snapchat were. I'm going to guess 200, two-thirds of the country use TikTok regularly is my guess, two, 200 million close you're up you're overestimating it's actually 150 million american users half Half. which is about halfway uh on average 45 percent of american girls according to a survey from common sense they say that they are addicted to tiktok yes what does that mean well on average american users spend 82 minutes per day just looking at tiktoks if you Seems so, if low. you think if you think of the average length of the average tick, like what would you say the average length is? I'm, I'm I don't own the app. I don't use it. I've never used it before. So it depends. So we'll talk about the algorithm and why it's so revolutionary here in a little bit too. So the average length of videos that go viral, and I'm going to consider going viral. And this is an official metric, which is more than 700 views, and that, and that is an official metric for how the algorithm trips and and whatnot. If it gets more than 700 views in 24 hours, it's kind of like on the path to going viral. The way that the app works, we think that the way that the app works. So for those videos that can be rolled out to randos anywhere, I'm going to say that the average length is maybe 12 to 15 seconds. So 12 to 15 seconds, 82 minutes a day. You get, let's say, ballpark four TikToks per minute. People yeah. are watching hundreds of day, like you know, three to four hundred TikToks a day, depending yeah. on what you know what length they're consuming and what the algorithm right. spits out sure. to them. Easy, it's easy. So, I mean, it's thousands and thousands of these things a week, and it's you can mm-hmm. you get why it's super addicting because you can you can pass memes really quickly that way. You can feel like you're in on the conversation, the the discourse. Uh, I think the general consensus around Elon Musk owning Twitter now is that the quality of that app has diminished significantly. I know a lot of people are really frustrated about uh, some of the kind of the needless changes and and the apparent uh, censoring of non everybody conservative yeah. non Elon Musk voices. So I think a lot of the conversation is pretty easy to shift over to TikTok, where people could just express themselves however they want, record a little right. video themselves, put a catchy audio on it, and suddenly you've got a lot more desirable and easy to consume content. You just like flick your finger. It is the most intuitive inch. app of all time. It's also it's so it, before we shit on what the app can do behind the scenes. It is the most amazing app I've ever experienced in terms of its content consumability. And it's amazing for a couple of reasons. One, the algorithm, I don't really understand exactly how it works. It goes off of microsecond uh, watch time. And the way that it works is you post a video. Yes, like two, like it it judges. The most important metric, people in America, like likes and engagement, no watch time. So TikToks that go viral have an average, average for like mega viral, like 50,000 million views, like that range they have an average watch time over 100%. Wow. That means that people watch the whole thing enough that it starts over, like, which, is, which is amazing. So That's the algorithm good. works. It, you post a video, it's immediately within the first 30 minutes rolled out to 500 randos who either follow you, don't follow you, whatever. There's some random people in there too. If like 80% of those people watch it, it's rolled out to an additional 500. If 80% of those people watch it, it's rolled out to like 50,000 people. And then Holy it goes cow. to like 90,000 people. And then it's like, eventually it will be rolled out to millions of people. So if you ever get a TikTok, you're scrolling and it's got like 20 likes, it either was posted recently and you're one of the noobs or it's a hyper curated to see if maybe you're the second round of 500. That's how it works. That's why TikTok co- content can go viral insanely quickly. It's like there are different tiers. So if you, if you post something and all 500 people watch 100% of it, it's going to be rolled out immediately to like 100,000 people. And if they also like it, the sample size grows and grows and grows and grows. Eventually it goes from niche to everyone has seen this. Mm-hmm. And that's how you get really big information like the TikTok because of this the niches and and viral like how quickly things can go viral (laughs) this is how things like the uh east pal TikTok is the reason the east palestine thing got so much attention and because of that it is an elite place for journalists and information on the ground to happen it's amazing in in this way there are also niches on TikTok that are bullshit and there's dancers or whatever you want but because the algorithm is so fast you don't need to follow anybody to know big information and it also, because it's so intuitive, you don't need to have an account to do. You have to have an account to share and things, but you don't have to have an account. Because of that, every single demographic likes it. There are most times old people like Facebook, they don't like Snapchat. Everybody gets TikTok. And because of that, and the third reason, not only does everybody like watching it, 
the user base on TikTok is not just people who are technological savvy. There are old professors. There are new kids. There are every single demographic is represented on TikTok in a way that is just profound. Yeah, it's it's shocking. I mean, we we've talked to we talked to our parents about that, and they're yeah. like what in their early two or three hundreds. Yeah, something like that. I mean, like uh, Loretta was, she was in, I think, Boston at the time of the Declaration of Independence reading, but I don't think she yes, was really. And she lived there long enough to experience the uh, syrup explosion. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So pretty impressive longevity. And the fact that she's able to handle TikTok and consume that information, I, I think it's pretty impressive. It, you know, it, it, it really is a remarkable app. And I think it, it speaks not just to the quality of the app, but also like the changing nature of what we would call internet content. I mean, I, I think yeah. the term content isn't even really that old. It's got to be like a decade of like, yeah, maybe you know, people refer to like what you're putting on the internet, like YouTubers uploading videos or people sharing statuses or sharing images on Instagram. Like that's considered content. Sure. Uh, I heard a, I saw a parody uh, account the other day say like uh, Gen Z refers to heavy metal album that changed your entire worldview as content. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's true. I think it's no, no. In the in the annals of the history of the internet, uh, hey, which we're going to be really cool. I wish I was alive 100 years from now to like study this. It'd be kind of fascinating. The barstool sports guys kind of made that happen. They just like, what if we took the Kardashian reality TV model and just made it 24 seven for randos and just like uploaded their lives and made it as content, see whatever they consume. And now like everybody kind of does that. And TikTok can make random people into big stars. And it's the only app that consistently and significantly compensates content creators who have a significant following, not from advertisers. They just give them money to make content if they're famous. That's which amazing. Is crazy. So yes. you, and that's so part of this band. They're, they're employed by TikTok to create <laughs> content? Is that the deal? They're or? not employed. TikTok just, if you are incentivized, if your shit goes viral and you consistently go viral, they will give you compensation. Wow. That you is have to opt shocking. into this program. Yes. Well, that's why this is a big fucking deal because these content creators, a bunch of... Con See, you don't know TikTok. This is me explaining to an old man what's happening. <laughs> Some of these content creators, <laughs> I was early on TikTok and then I bailed and I came off and then, then I was late on TikTok. Otherwise, I think I could have probably been one of these people. So you completely really missed it on. is what you're saying. 100% I think about it. I don't know, not every day, but pretty close. Um, it's, it's the worst thing ever. So the way it works is they wanted people to use the app in China. Like they, this, like it, they wanted to expand to English speaking markets. So it was a paid for ad. I saw the ad for TikTok on YouTube for years. And I was like, I don't know what the fuck this is. So I downloaded it and looked at it. And now these, these guys and these girls, they were doing dances and they're hot teenagers and young kids. And, and then eventually cops got really into it. And there's a hot, horny cop TikTok. That's the thing. And it spread and it spread and it spread and it spread. And then everybody got onto it. TikTok, if you have 10,000 followers, and you consistently get 100,000 views per month, which is easy. I've gotten over that in chess, no problem. Not the followers, but the views. Then sure. you can opt into what's called its creator platform, which means that if you're opting in, then TikTok will compensate you a certain RPM, which is how it's, it's rate per milli or whatever, how, many, how much money you make per thousand views. Sure. They, you can opt into that. Wow. Right? And so some of these people that have a million followers, they're making like their biggest months were like two or 300,000. And so TikTok is using the revenue that it gets from ordinary ad yeah purchases yep. and it's injecting that directly back into the content creation stream so it's not like you can monetize this like if you record a certain ad for tiktok or a certain ad for somebody else then you'll get money that indirectly instead you're basically doing a per job payment yeah. scheme of getting paid by the company to post creative content and drive more consumption right exactly wow. so then you the people then you become kind of celebrities. Like there are people who are only famous on TikTok, but being famous on TikTok is being famous. Like being famous on Twitter or Instagram is not being famous. Being TikTok famous is being famous. They get is invited it? to things. Yes. Wow. Like there's a girl, um, the most famous one is this girl called Alex Earl. She's just a hot college girl. She moves to LA. Like she's in a list events now just because she posts TikToks about her life and she looks good like that. Nothing else happened. There are other people, a lot of TikTok users like Elise Myers, um, the Justin Danger, I think his name is. He may, he had a whole shtick on there. And so at a certain point, they, they verified these people and they give them money. Then there was a step down, say like if I had 50,000 followers and I do hit the parameters, I may make 70 to 80 bucks a month or something, which is nice or whatever. Sure. This migrated and this, we're going to get into the ban in a minute, but this got people to migrate their efforts from creating TikTok, to creating content for Instagram and YouTube to creating content for TikTok. Then everybody kind of figured out how to do it, how to get good, how to manipulate TikTok as great writers, like everything is good anticipation. Then TikTok kind of lowered how much they paid out. They still pay, but you couldn't, most people couldn't quit their jobs and it kind of got saturated or whatever. Then Facebook, 
with, with Meta, with Facebook and Instagram, they started paying those people. And YouTube kind of did as well, but not as much. And now there's a whole thing. With the congressional appearance of the CEO, what's his name? Uh, his name is uh, Shozichu. Shozichu. With his appearance, TikTok, or they stopped paying content creators because they're prepared to not have to spend money for these people that are famous on TikTok to need to go elsewhere. So that's what's happening right now. We will talk about the ban and congressional brinkmanship in a minute, but let's talk about what TikTok can do behind the scenes. TikTok Collecting can data. do a lot of scary things behind the scenes. Let's and just, just to add a little context here, uh, that, that in the amount of time that people spend on TikTok, 82 minutes mm -hmm. a day on average, yep. that is more than Facebook and Instagram combined. Yeah, no. So you can understand why if other social media bite. platforms are are concerned about this. Yeah. One of the critiques that was levied against TikTok is, as we said, there's concern that the information that the the app takes up, which is like when it's downloaded, it gets your basic like demographic information. It gets your age, gender. It gets your name. It gets your race. It gets your location. Uh, mm -hmm. it, but it can also grab a lot of other information, like what how much time you spend on each app, how much time you spend looking at what parts of the phone, depending on like if it has access to your camera and that kind of stuff. And there's a legitimate concern that the app, TikTok, and or the parent company ByteDance could be sharing information directly with the Chinese Communist Party. There are real grand strategic concerns with that. But I do want to point out that there's a significant difference between what TikTok does with its data in potentially sharing it with the CCP and what other American-based social media companies like Facebook and Instagram do with their data. Uh, and Mark Warner is a senator for Virginia, and during one of these hearings, he had a, he had a good quotation. He said, for all the critiques of the American-based platforms, at the end of the day, they don't report to the CIA. They don't report to the American government. And I think this, like, this highlights really like the fundamental difference between the American system and the Chinese system. It's not like two large countries who are equally, who are the same all the way down and they operate in the same way and it's just competition. And so America just wants to give its platforms the advantage by banning the Chinese one. Like that may or may not be true, but what is true is that the way that the Chinese government does business is fundamentally different and much more illiberal than the way that yeah. the U.S. government does with its companies. And so the, the amount of information that TikTok can share with the Chinese Communist Party is kind of obscured because they obviously don't want, they, they, it's not in their best interest to be caught out if they are sharing data. Yeah. And if they're not, I don't understand why they're not much more transparent about what they do and, and don't do with user information. So it's, it's like, well, you know, it, it, the, for the average citizen, the argument that if you have nothing to hide, then you should share everything. Like that's a terrible argument for the average citizen. Yeah. But when you're a foreign company in front of a foreign government for their like highest legislative bodies hearing session, uh, you should be much more transparent than uh, than, than Shozi Chu was. Yes. So I have I have some thoughts and I have some vibes that I'm getting from this too. So my understanding is that for companies based in China. You have to, it is a law, and I say the Chinese government, the Chinese government is the Chinese Communist Party. They are succinct at this point. Yeah, so, it's, it's, a, it's a single party system, and the, yeah. the Chinese Communist Party does run the entirety of, of the Chinese Everything. government. Like, the right. elections are, like, they're a farce. It's nonsense. They, they do not have elections. They have appointments by people who are already in power. There is no representation. The party itself is only, like, 90 million people or something, which is a fraction of the size of, of the state of China. But the party apparatus controls every single lever of the entire government. Like, it's, it's there is no, like, you, you're, you're exactly right, Nick. There is no daylight There's between no the Chinese yeah. Communist Party and the Chinese government. Right. And there, yeah. And like whether or not there will be, I know there's unrest there more than there has ever been, whatever. Every, every, a lot of that's kind of died down, shit. actually. Yeah. I mean, it comes and goes. We'll see. The, now that they know that they can do it, we'll see when they get energy for round two. I mean, the French are on round five right now, and they're like, they just wow. got the nooses and things out. Did you see that? Well, all they, no, all they, all they <laughs> do is protest. Like, we'll get I, into that in a second. I would well, be interested I don't know. Last in time they were this, protest. last time they were this mad for this long, they killed people. Well, no. Ooh, no they, yeah. When? In this 1793. Oh, they weren't. No, 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 no. We'll no. see. We're, no, we're we'll going to back that bus up immediately to compare yeah, what's happening today, to, to compare the <sighs> possibility of the French government adjusting the retirement age by two years to the French Revolution. We're skipping so many, like hundreds and hundreds of protests that are they so much more. Like, have no, no. Nooses in the streets so so they had nooses on Capitol Hill that's on actually January does not 6th. Me as well. Yeah, that's okay. All right. We'll talk about why, why I think this way because of TikToks, TikToks that I saw in a moment. So this is the vibes that I got. 
from congressional testimony from what I think is happening. And this is what brings us to the game theory of this, the congressional money brinksmanship. Okay. There are a lot of people with a lot at stake and everybody's full of shit and everything is kind of true is the way that I see this. First of all, the Chinese government communist party, it's not like ByteDance can tell them to fuck off. Like we're going to protect these data yeah. in China. If you have a company, the Chinese cover government by law, the law that they wrote, like we can just walk in and do it wherever we want at any point in time. They can't shut down the company allegedly, but they can be like, give us everything. Yes. And yes. And like in America, that's not the case. We kind of can. There have to be orders, but it's not like they can just like show up. So that's not quite answering to the Chinese Communist Party, but it essentially is. They can just station a guy there. It's like, okay, I'm looking at everything. So yes. it's a ton of data. Now, a lot of TikTok users, people that I would say, let's, let's classify TikTok users and TikTok creators. I have to, my mic is in my face. Ah, there we go. No, it's good. This, this, <laughs> Thank this, you. this little move is pretty good. Yeah. Watch on YouTube. So the, the users... Their vibe has been like, who gives a shit? Fuck them. We'll kill China. Well, that's stupid. So <laughs> that's objectively dumb. Yeah. The other vibe that I get here is that TikTok was created. It was a great app and they're trying to compete in the American market. And then it just was better than they ever thought it was. I get the vibe from TikTok brass that they think that they are better than the Chinese Communist Party. And then the way that the way that the congressional testimony went for me was not how I thought it would go. I thought it would be a lot of stonewalling, the, the expressions on his face. Maybe he's a good actor. CEOs are mostly sociopaths. It feels like that's alleged, not true. Would never be accused of that. <laughs> but I thought it would be like, hey, you know, like we're doing our best. But the vibe I got was like, I can't talk shit on them, dude. I got to go home. But also like, yeah, fuck those guys. Fuck all of you. We're our own thing. Statistically speaking, if you combine the early success of YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat... TikTok is more than double user base and user time than they were at this point. It is bananas how successful it is. So they got to be looking around like, fuck China, fuck the Eastern Asia, fuck America. Like we are king now. And they, I think that, that that's the vibe that I got, that he doesn't want to have to answer to China. I think he doesn't want to, but he does. He does. So that's part of this, right? So they, it's not an option. So Congress, despite all of the clips that went viral of like, can you get on your Wi-Fi or what? Like, they can do that. They can do all of the things that the idiot Congress people were asked, like alleging them that they can do. They can ask, they know what your retina looks like. They have it stored. They can have your fingerprints. They probably have, if doctors have it, they probably have your medical records from their doctor apps on there. Like they have all that shit. I don't know that it's nefarious. I think it may have started as like, a, we're hand in glove, but I think TikTok has gotten too powerful. So that's my vibe on congressional, the, the testimony. Let's talk about brakemanship and all the parties involved. Okay. Party number one, the Chinese Communist Party. They want to know everything about everybody. And they do, essentially. Party number two, TikTok. They want to be rich and run the world. They want to be Mark Zuckerberg times a million, and they are trending in that direction. Party number three, which is funny, that old tech, big tech, old tech. Now that the people, the Google and Facebook are the olds here. Google, Facebook, YouTube, Apple, people that make app, well, mostly the app, the platform people. They hate TikTok because they're getting embarrassed. They have rolled out their own versions of TikTok, reels and shorts, they can't figure the algorithm out for shit. They just can't fucking figure it out. It's not the same thing. They're like, get these people out of here. I don't want them in my country, which is Mark Zuckerberg deleting the ability to delete your account, which is the dirtiest shit you've ever seen. They want TikTok gone. Then you have Congress and they want to be famous. They don't give a fuck. That's this true. TikTok shit has been going on for years. Like, they don't give a shit. What happened was a bunch of, and I, this is from reporting in the Wall Street Journal, what happened was a bunch of conservatives, mega conservatives, in the middle of the country, specifically South Dakota, Texas, Tennessee, figured out that China could do this. I don't know if they just read a newspaper or what. And they were like, well, let's ban it. And then it grows and grows and grows in the conservative base. So now all of a sudden, the conservatives um, in the middle of America don't want the app. Congress wants to be elected. So liberals who are in charge of the country, the Democratic base, they want TikTok to stay because their user base is on TikTok. Conservatives want it to go because they hate China. As a result of that, Congress people are in this game of like, who's going to keep it? Who, where's it going to go? And the people that they really answer to are Mark Zuckerberg and Sergey Brin, who are funding their campaigns, the lobby money. And that's where the fight on TikTok is happening. All of the TikTok content creators are mad. And they're like, of course, they're going to ban TikTok. It's Facebook and Google paying behind the scenes. Yes, true. The Congress people are like, China's stealing all our data. Correct. TikTok is like, we're not sharing it. They're essentially saying like, fuck China. I absolutely buy that. And, and this is the best part. The users are like, all of these things are happening to us. Yes, all of you are right. 
All of you are right. So the key now is who is going to play the game theory game the correct way? Because I firmly believe, and this is me, this is the end of my rant. I firmly believe that if TikTok starts lobbying Congress, I'll never hear about this again. So yeah, I think Congress is... That, that's, that's, a re- that's a really interesting take. That, like, I, I mean, I think it way oversimplifies things because the Chinese Communist Party is much more influential and much stronger than I think you realize. Like, to say that TikTok can just say like, oh yeah, China, we don't answer to you. Like, that's not how that works. That's no, no, not no. how Chinese business works no. at all. No, absolutely. And I, I, and I said that. I said that. But I don't think that the people running TikTok are the answer to them legally. But I yes. don't think that they are cooperating, if that makes sense. Like no. They do or they're doing no, what they have to no, do. No, they, they don't have a choice. Like, I, 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 th- I, think, I, I think sometimes it gets lost. Like In American society, the idea that like 1984 is like a real thing and people are constantly yeah. watching and your know, big brother is continually monitoring you in all aspects of your life and trying to control your thought and manipulate. It seems so silly and dystopian and it's a good way to... Like if you invoke 1984 when you're like arguing with a political opponent or whatever, it's a good way to like make it seem silly or trivialize it. I don't think people realize the full extent to which the Chinese Communist Party has control over its population. I don't think people yes. really understand just how much at the mercy of the, the, the state apparatus Chinese companies are. And it's it, it in the fact that they have a bunch of users means absolutely zero. They, they, well, yeah. There's there's a, a phenomenon that we talked about before with with the app. Do you remember when we had a clip about uh, the Be Real app where people are yeah. like posting he, themselves yeah, in does. a location yeah. at a time of the app's choosing and said this is right. terrible for OPSEC. You should not participate in this. This is the dumbest thing you can do. I think th- I mean that that idea still applies, except there's a concept called ubiquitous monitoring, and when you have state control over street cameras when you can monitor traffic patterns, when you can track individual vehicles going into and out of every location in the entirety of like a a whole city or like an entire province, when you have facial recognition technology that can immediately use a camera to look at somebody coming out of a building and within milliseconds identify exactly who that person is, when you know that person's credit score, when you know that person's financial information, when you know that person's occupation, when you know that person's like leisure time activities, including how they use their... How, how they consume their entertainment. When you know all that stuff, it is far, far easier to implement controls over the population than it is than, than you could like realize. Like there, there've been a bunch of like sci-fi fantasy movies and stuff about this. Like, oh yeah, yeah the well, world is a digital book and Zola taught Hydra how to read it. And it seems silly in American society because we don't have that kind of illiberal government apparatus. Well, in China they do. And the fact that the parent company bite dance is legally beholden to the Chinese communist party. That's not a formalism. That's not like, Oh yeah, well technically they are, but you know, in reality they can just tell them to fuck off. Like they cannot because the, the party knows who they are. The party knows where they are. The party can make people disappear. The party can make people retract previous statements. The party can make people record statements that make it seem like they're not under duress and they're saying completely different things. Like the, the, the level of control that the Chinese Communist Party has over its population and the private companies that do business inside its borders is shocking. It's staggering. And so when conservatives in the U.S. realize that and they make connections between people using an app in their home just like on on their free time and the Chinese Communist Party gaining more power because information is power, like, there's a real legitimate concern there. And, you know, this this isn't like a brand new thing. It's not like they woke up in 2023 and thought, oh, well, gee whiz, we should do something about TikTok because I'm worried about Mark Zuckerberg's pocketbook. No. In 2020, India was the first company to ban TikTok. They banned other Chinese apps as well because, yeah. because there was an active, like, border clash in the Himalayas between the Indian and the Chinese. That was when they, like, got into a fist fight and, like, beat the hell out of each other with, like, mm, sticks. Awesome. Yeah. Yo, yo, raw warfare. Like, because they, they agreed not to use guns. So they wouldn't like go to a shooting war, but like they killed each other with their bare hands. Yeah. Uh, then Britain, Canada, and the European Parliament and others have banned TikTok from official devices. So it's not like the U.S. is is the first to do this either. By March no. 28th was the deadline for all like U.S. government, like federal government devices. They issue like a cell phone or like a laptop or whatever. You cannot download TikTok, and you have to have deleted it if you already did. So it's banned in the U.S. So, but it's it's not like 
it's not like this is just becoming like a part of the routine political cycle. And it's not like it's part of like the routine lobbying cycle either. This really is a, a, one of the battlegrounds that's just, it, it, it's a battleground in the grand strategic competition between the US and a rising China. But the difference between this one and all the other ones like the military and the political, whatever else, is that this one hits Americans right at home, like as close as yeah. you can get, which is to say in a device to which Americans are mostly addicted. Yeah, and it's it's incredibly addictive. And so TikTok, I think, to their credit, has done a great job of censoring really fucked up content in a way that other apps just have not or have chosen not to. TikTok is by far the safest case, safe safest place for children and sensitive content in terms of what you're looking at. You're not going to stumble on like hate speech and stuff. They are incredibly good, which is amazing and also terrifying. As a person who is in audio. I have long suspected that the way their algorithm is so good, the missing link that these companies can't figure out is I think they just have really good audio AI. I think they're able to identify what's happening by audio. But regardless of any of that, if you go on TikTok, you'll notice that a lot of the lingo that people use is this way because TikTok has shut down certain words. Like it's not your video will not be rolled out to certain people if there's profanity. It won't be rolled out to certain people if there are certain things. And there it will just straight up not be rolled out if it's got some content and only your followers can find it. So some of the, one of those things is kill, murder, kill yourself, suicide. Those words are no-nos. They wow. don't get rolled out. That's why the word unalive and unalived mm. have grown in popularity because it gets around the stuff. The other thing that's happening on TikTok, which I find fascinating, and I'm going to bring this back to congressional brinkmanship here in a minute to, to, to address what you just said because it's, it's true, but it's also not what a lot of Congress people are going to care about. They care about getting elected. So you, if you go on TikTok, all of these content creators are mad at Facebook and the government for doing this. They're like, they're in the pocket of big tech. Well, they're going to say that because those companies won't pay them to make content. And if they did, they wouldn't be as famous. So the, mm -hmm. the big level content creators want to go to YouTube because YouTube actually is by far the most profitable. You can quit your job on YouTube with ads and things by far. That's real stuff. But YouTube doesn't pay you directly. TikTok does. So it's easier to get a couple bucks on TikTok. So all of these, con these content creators are kind of mad at the government for taking the bait of big tech. But one of the banned words is Chinese Communist Party. You will never, from any country in any accent of any language, hear criticism of the Chinese Communist Party on TikTok. Never, ever, never. If there were people on TikTok making content that were good enough at this to be like, hey, maybe they're right, that's getting cut out. There's no chance. That TikTok will find it and they will get rid of it. But again, very good at getting rid of like the, the milk crate challenge went viral a couple of years ago. People died doing that. It's so like, yep, making milk crate videos, you're out. They'll ban your account forever. So they're good. I don't, know what, I don't know what that is. Milk crate challenge where you get a bunch of milk crates and you make a pyramid out of them that's maybe seven, eight feet tall and you run up and run down them, but it's not stable. So people fall, fell over and died. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible stupidity. Is right. It's like so, the Tide Pod thing. Got, yeah, literally the same thing. Tide Pod, that got banned too. And you can do no hashtags, nothing. You can do it without speaking words. They can find this. It's amazing. Well, and when you when you talk about stuff like that and you talk about like certain content just gets restricted right away mm -hmm. and like words like Chinese Communist Party are included in that. I mean, mm -hmm. that rightly calls to mind broader Internet censorship in China. I mean, do you do you know how much China censors its Internet? Do you have any idea how much? Yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know that like essentially all these big tech companies have two companies. They have like the Chinese version of their company and the Ameri and the non Chinese version of their company. Yeah, you, can't, I, like, you don't have Google. No, I, and, and like it, that's not just because China wants to make more money with its version. Like we want our guys to do better. No, it's because they want to control the information environment, like controlling what the narrative is shaping the discourse to your interests is a straight up political strategy for China to try to compete with the U S in a grand strategic long lasting contest. Like there are books about this aplenty. There's a podcast of that, that outlines like the history of like Xi Jinping, like the Prince, uh, the economist publishes really excellent, but like, I mean, people in China work to censor the internet, like for their job, they, 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 yeah. they go and like, they go sit down at a desk in this internet censorship agency and it's got like some innocuous sounding name, like the internet or like the technology company. It, it's some generic sounding thing. And their basic job is like, you go at a desk, you search every website from the hours of like, I don't know, 11.43 a.m. to 11.47 a.m. And everything within that four hour or four minute window, if you search for all these terms and you find them, you delete that information right away. And not just the term, you delete the whole page, you delete the whole post, you delete all of the content related to that. And it's not just, so it's not like, oh, we don't want Google operating, so you can't use Google in China. You got to use our local thing. It's you cannot discuss Xi Jinping. Yeah. You cannot discuss Winnie the Pooh. 
you cannot discuss the Chinese Communist Party. And like, it's it's ridiculous what the list of banned words includes. So I I, I need to look this up. So I, I'm I'm looking up a Xi Jinping uh, confirmation vote because the number of people that elected Xi Jinping in the party uh, to give him his like formal third term as president a couple of weeks ago was 2,952. Zero people voted against. Right. Okay, so like it's, it, 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 it's, it's a farcical election. But uh, I follow like some China people on Twitter and reportedly the number 2,952 was banned on China's internet because they didn't want people discussing the outcome of this election. They didn't yeah. want people discussing this in a way that could possibly come up with mockery or belittling or any kind of subversion. Like you could not find that number on the internet in China. So like when you see this and you see TikTok using the exact same, pursuing the exact same outcome to mm -hmm. stifle conversation about specific things, you can understand why there's legitimate concerns of, that they're tied to the Chinese Communist Party, they're using, they're giving information about Americans to the Chinese government, and they're trying to control the information environment. Like that is grand strategy and strategic competition one zero one, and like you get it now. So yes, it's like like oh yeah, the, the the big tech just wants their money back, and like they're making it harder for creators to make money because they just don't want to pay out. Like okay, that's a great argument that the Chinese Communist Party is very very happy that you're making. They're delighted yes. to have people try to blame big tech and American right. well, business. They, and there's not actual discourse stuff. happening on TikTok because the Chinese Communist Party won't allow criticism Correct. for even Americans. Correct. However, however, it doesn't matter because Congress needs to get elected and Democrats can't get elected if they vote for a ban. The young kids want it and they don't give a fuck about anything else and it doesn't matter. The only thing to do now is to figure out how to sell it, which there was an opportunity in, a, in 2020 and apparently before China knew what they had in their hands and I genuinely think that the Chinese Communist Party was looking at this and like, holy shit, this turned out great. So back then true. it was just like an app. I think that Microsoft did not want to pay $40 billion for TikTok in 2020. Dude, what a fuck up. Huge tech. Now, player. Oracle, Microsoft, a bunch of other companies are trying to buy TikTok and looking into it. The Chinese Communist Party made it very clear, we're not selling it. You can't take it. So we're at this point now where a ban is going to happen or should happen logistically. It can't. Congress would have to take enough money to guarantee re-election. Otherwise, Democrats in swing states are not going to get re-elected. Their constituents are going to be so pissed about their addiction being taken away from them. And, that, like, and that's where this is going to get really interesting because the only thing to do is... And the big tech part of this to me is fucking hilarious. Like, all of, they are lobbying behind the scenes. It's very obvious. Well, and like, th this also gets at another question that, that I, I think we're not probably going to touch on very much in this, but that is worth considering. It's like, in, in today's day and age, like the problem with so much information being available so ubiquitously, like the fact that you can just lie and people think it's true. Yeah. It, like you can spread misinformation unintentionally by saying the wrong thing, like we probably have done in this very episode. Or you can we'll say disinformation, out. which is intentionally spreading the wrong information so that people can like draw their own conclusions or whatever. Like 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 let's let's just say hypothetically it's not true that Facebook ever did that. Then yeah. TikTok would be spreading misinformation spreading disinformation to try to like craft a narrative. Like so like the conclusion of the average TikTok user who's addicted to the app already is like, "Oh man, Facebook's really bad. I got to get rid of that." So like whether it's true or isn't it, 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 at a certain point, it doesn't matter whether it's true. If you repeat it over and over again and people buy it and they take action as a result of that, then you get what you want. So controlling the information environment is super, super important. And like there are moral questions about like who decides what is and isn't in misinformation, like depending on how things are characterized. Yeah. Like a fact isn't just a fact in a vacuum. Like you you, you cannot just... The information well, we follow the experience itself. triangle on this show. And we know that the fact is the hardest level of truth to attain and it, there are very few facts. Yes, the uh, the patented uh, game theory triangle of That's right. Nick's philosophical mind. That's right. But but so the, the point is, I mean, there's very real concern about the information space and TikTok being such an important part of modern American life with such a grip on how people spend like casual entertainment time and, and consume content. It's so easy. It's so passive. It's ubiquitous. And I, I think it just shows how intense a global competition can be when it reaches like directly into the pockets and into the hands literally of Americans, like people who are on the other side of the globe from the country that 
has control over the information. Yeah, and they make money. Like, this is their job. Like, people have quit their jobs to do this because they can feed their families and like far, far wealthier than they ever would have been on, you know, whatever project manager role or whatever they had at the time. So that, mm-hmm. like, this is going to impact them. So their, their stake in this is real. Like, for me, like, it's an inter- entertainment thing. And, I mean, reels and YouTube exists or, or whatever. And I, for sure, whether or not Facebook ability, deleted the ability to delete, about two weeks ago, they stopped paying creators. That for sure happened. Um, and they know they're doing that with banking out a band because the TikTok creators got to go somewhere. They're like, okay, you have to come here um, or you're not going to do it. It would behoove one of them to pay the other ones to just like get them. Like YouTube should be trying to get these people to migrate now. And I think that they are. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. But uh, regardless, it, the, the other stakeholder in this is, of course, Microsoft, who would love to have TikTok. And for me, TikTok, again, I just don't think that they want to be controlled by China. I would think that they would love to be sold so that they can get over here. And just they, they exist in this, this plane of social media that we can, that's unfathomable compared to whatever we've seen. And Facebook caught on like wildfire. This is a, never, a new level of holy shit. The other thing is that from a societal standpoint, yes, there are videos of cats. I got better at chess and golf from tutorials I, I watched on yeah. TikTok that found me. Well, <laughs> Everything if you get a microscope, if you get a microscope, you can see my, my chest improvement, but they, and they, the content found me and it was great and, and whatever, but like the Iranian unrest was propagated by users on TikTok, the Ukrainian war. I know more about the war in Ukraine just because of experts on TikTok and seeing footage from Russia and Ukraine, the, a bunch of civil unrest in the United States happens on TikTok. The East Palestine thing happened on TikTok. And if you're not looking for it on Twitter or Facebook, it's not going to find you on TikTok. It'll find you. And it, it, it creates a world in which people really can rally together in a way that the algorithm is incredibly freeing. On the other side, it's, it's very addicting and whatnot. So I think that the app is objectively good. The company and China are the problem. So yep. for the United States, you're, you're the situation. Like, how do you convince the users? Like, guys, it's bad. Like, we can't, can't do it. Because they freak out. But the, the other thing is that if they don't have TikTok, maybe they can't freak out all at once. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's impossible to, for people to see the consequences when, like, the benefits are right there in their hand and the consequences are, like, far away and really abstract. Like, it's it's a really, it, it's a non-concrete thing for someone to say, like, well, a foreign government has your data and we're in a big contest with them. And it's also very easy to make appeals to things that are popular among the user base. Like, the, like the big, like, I'm talking... You know, one of, one of the, the Democrats' like core constituencies is like the NGO Borg who's like yeah. wandering around DC and is like saying all the right things and making all the right impressions. Water. And like that's a that's a core constituency for for the TikTok user base as well. And so to say like, oh well, you know, you just don't want the Chinese people to win because you know you're racist, or right. like you just don't want the Chinese company to win because well, you don't really believe in free speech. Like, well, okay, it, yeah. it's very easy to make these kind of two faced arguments. Because there's like plausible deniability behind them. Like you, you could see like a world in which, all right, is it unreasonable to think that Mark Zuckerberg would be lobbying Congress to try to eliminate a competitor from the market? Like, no, I get it. You, so you can make these kind of plausible, reasonable sounding arguments. Um, at the end of the day, they are horseshit, but they're horseshit that people consume right along. Uh, it's like the seasoning to the TikTok actual content. And so it's really, really hard to convince people to give up something that they really like and enjoy, but that they can't appreciate the consequences to. Yeah. And I think that I want to be clear and something to correct ourselves. It's not like a liberal use space. It's everybody. Conservatives have plenty of quarters. That's, of that's true. That's yeah. true. I'm, 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 I'm overstating yeah. that characterization. Well, yeah. Well, well, yeah, well and like, that's what, like, that's where those people that are, are the constituents, their congressperson should be worried about how they feel. But it's also true in places like Texas and Tennessee. We're like, well, all of the liberal media is censoring us now, but TikTok kind of isn't even though they are, if you talk about China or suicide, but they, yeah. they don't censor really anything else. So if you want to be a conservative and talk about your Christian beliefs or whatever, that gets way more popular views and you can make money doing that kind of thing on TikTok in a way that, you know, conservatives have been accusing other platforms of taking them off for years. So everybody feels the same way. So I need to make that clear, but I absolutely agree with you that whether or not the narrative, and this is why I started with, I think essentially everything we said today is true. Everybody that has an argument and is freaking out about this from a different angle is at least in part correct. I absolutely think fa- Mark Zuckerberg is mad. He got beat and he's, he's lobbying people from California and Montana and shit to be like, shut them down. Absolutely buy that. No question. The Chinese Communist Party is like, you go over there and you fucking lie. Absolutely. I absolutely think Microsoft is behind the scenes here playing like, please, love of God, hand us that sweetheart deal again. Holy shit, we screwed up. Absolutely. I believe that the people who actually care about national defense are like, China is going to invade the United States the next five years. We should freak the fuck out about this. I absolutely believe that's true. I think everybody is, the users are like, this is a genuine happiness in my life. It's better than Netflix. It's better than YouTube. It's better than reading the news. It's more accurate. It's more honest. I love this. 100%. 
It has changed my life for the better, no question. I'm an adult and I don't, I don't get addicted to it in the same way. Sometimes I do too much, but it's, it's, it's great. Everybody's right. Everybody's yes. right. We got ourselves an old, an old fashioned Mexican standoff here. <laughs> yeah, we, re- we really do. It is, it is like the scene at the end of the office <laughs> where like, this is really silly and nonsensical, but like if you were standing in a room where everybody was pointing two crossbows at each other, uh-huh. like it'd be, it'd be a dangerous situation. Yeah, yes. you said something earlier about uh, talking about going viral, and I want to kind of like close with just the discussion of like what it means to go viral. It, sure. it, it means nothing anymore. Like yeah. that that term is such a like two thousands computer term, like dot com bubble term, because it, for something to have gone viral in the past, like there was just so much less content. Like people create like is it like thousands and thousands of trillions of bytes of data every year. So like the information that is out there is just so much more voluminous now than it was. And like we talked about Orwell before, well, Aldous mm-hmm. Huxley also wrote about like what a dystopian future might possibly look like. And, the, and I want to, I want to quote from this book called uh, right. amusing ourselves to death from 1985. It was, uh, it, it was, a comparison it was like a, the thesis is that uh, Aldous Huxley might have been right about what the future of the world is going to look like sure. so he said Orwell feared those who would deprive us of information Huxley feared those who would give us so much that we'd be re- reduced to passivity and egoism mm. Orwell feared that the truth would be concealed from us Huxley feared the truth would be drowned in a sea of irrelevance yep. Orwell, Orwell feared we would become a captive culture Huxley feared we would become a trivial culture, preoccupied with some equivalent of the feelies, the orgy porgy, and the centrifugal bumble puppy. <laughs> so, like the the uh, drowning in a sea of irrelevance, I, I think it, it's it's a great it's a great metaphor for how just so much content is out there and deciding what's good and what isn't. I mean, you're at the mercy of people who own all the data, control the narrative, and are able to use their algorithm to push it out to you. Right. So, trying to figure out what what is true and what isn't, what is good and what isn't, like it's extremely hard at the rate at which human beings produce data you know according to statista like we're, we're set to produce 181 zeptabytes of data by 2025 mm-hmm. i don't even know what a zeptabyte is that's like yeah. or a zettabyte it, it it's just so huge the amount of information that's produced every single day and uh it's it's getting harder and harder to swim and like find islands of stability in this ocean of just trivia so I, I love that. And I'm going to compound on that by something else I find to be just hauntingly accurate, which and I, I, like anybody else who went to liberal arts college, I dream of being a screenwriter. Yes. We're going to gloss over that. We're, glo- we're glossing. <laughs> we, will, we will discuss later. We are glossing and gloss. Game okay. theory of how to get your screen. So public, the thing that I really like, I really, find it, I really find it romantic that medieval monks used to translate things and little things could be changed in translations. Ergo, oh, yeah. I like adaptations. I always wanted to uh, adapt War and Peace and some other books that I really like, one of which is Infinite Jest. Now, David Foster Wallace in 1992 predicted some shit that will make your fucking head spin. Like, the, yeah. the Williams sisters will be good at tennis. He predicted that in 92. 92, he predicted that. He predicted that an election so di- divisive would tear America apart and it would be like America 2.0. That election, he predicted in 92, was to be between Glenn Beck and Hillary Clinton. Holy shit. Shocking. But the plot of the movie is that some sort of entertainment, a show would be so entertaining that it would addict the population to the point that it would be a virus. We have it. Here we are. It happened. It was not quite what he thought it would be, but here we are. And I, with that note, you can follow us on TikTok at Game Theory Pod. Um, we've got a couple of shorts where we talk about Seinfeld and some <laughs> other shit. Hey, if you can't beat him, hail to the whatever his name is. Um, Got to put on our water wings and swim, baby. On a side note, I, he has to be a little scared that so many Americans just flaunt guns everywhere. Just, we just have so many guns. It's Yeah, they're not crazy. coming here. No, no. I mean, I think we have cousins. Our two cousins, I saw them at a funeral and um, 24. Years old? Nope. Nope. Asked me if they had ammo for all of them. That's of two course. AR-15s. Yep. Not a lot of AR-15s uh, getting in the way of the Communist Party in China. I'll tell you no. that. <laughs> and with that, I, you know, Chris, we're going to have a uh, fantasy football podcast around soon enough because we got to do some lighter content. We're going to talk about two jargons and one lie, the greatest game that's ever been played on a podcast. We're going to do that one of these days. That's going to happen. Yeah, I'm sick of China. Let's bring on the games. Yes.